Hello, and welcome to Lesson 4.3b, Slope Intercept Form. Our objective for today's lesson is that I can graph and interpret linear functions. Our vocabulary words. The first one is parameters. The variables m and b are parameters because changing either value changes the graph of the function. Secondly, a constant function is a linear function in the form y is equal to b. The graph of a constant function has a slope of 0, and the domain is all real numbers, and the range is b. So no matter what you put in for your x value, your y value will always be your y-intercept. So let's look at letter a. We're going to graph this function, um, and previously we used uh, a whole data table where you had to find five points, and then you were able to graph it from there. Now, the advantage of using slope-intercept form is that you are given a y-intercept, a place to start from, your starting point, and you are given a slope. So that's going to be what you are going to change by from one step to the next. And so first, we just need to identify what are these two pieces of information in our equation. Now, your slope is always going to be what is attached to your variable. Now, I just want to point out and remind you that the sign in front of a number is attached to that number. So this is a negative 3 for the slope. And my y-intercept is in the equation right here. And so my y-intercept is going to be 4. So now I start by graphing. And I put uh, my starting point at 4. And my slope is negative 3. So what that means is I'm going negative 3 over 1. So we're going to go down 3 and to the right 1. So down 1, 2, 3 to the right 1. Down 1, 2, 3 to the right 1. Down 3 to the right 1. Down 3 to the right 1. All right, now a negative slope is always going to be moving down as we move to the right. You can always also work this backwards, so you can go up 3 and to the left 1, but you'll see that the pattern is still holding true that we have a downward trajectory as we go from left to right. Now, my expectation for you is that you have at least 3 points drawn on your graph. Ideally, you would like it to be five points or more, uh, or as many as you can fit on the graph, but the absolute minimum to get a decent line is going to be three. The more points you have graphed, the better your line is going to be as you graph it. Now, for letter B, our slope here is one-half, and our y-intercept is negative eight. So we're just going to write those out for us. Slope is, is one-half, and my b value is negative 8. So I start my point at negative 8 on our y-axis. And my slope is 1 half, so I'm going up 1 and to the right 2 with every single step that I take. Up 1 to the right 2, up 1 to the right 2. And if I connect all these points, And it would help if I had a straight line. There we go. There's our graph. And remember, the expectation does still hold that you are uh, going to be putting arrows at the end of your line, and you are expected to gra draw your graph all the way to the edge of your grid. Letter C. We've got a slope. This time the values are reversed. Our slope is right there, so our slope, again, is attached to our x value, is negative 3. My y-intercept is the value here, and again, we're looking at the signs in front of a value. So the sign in front of 7, there is nothing there, so that is going to be a positive 7. So I'm starting off at y is equal to 7, that's my y-intercept, and my slope is negative 3, so I'm going down 3 and to the right 1. Down 1, 2, 3, to the right 1. Down 1, 2, 3, right 1. Down 3, right 1. Down 3, right 1. 
Now, why is it 3 over 1 that we're going down? Um, the reason for that is any whole number can be written as a fraction over 1. So negative 3 is simply negative 3 over 1, down 3 and to the right 1. Letter D. We're going to look for our slope. Our slope is 4, and our y-intercept is right there at negative 5. So m equals 4, b is equal to negative 5. And so we're going to graph that. We start with our y-intercept, negative 5, and our slope is a positive 4, so we're going up 4 to the right 1, up 4 to the right 1, up 4 to the right 1, and that's as far as we can go there. I can work my pattern backwards, 1, 2, 3, 4. So it would be down 4 and to the left 1. And now I can connect all of these dots. And I have, after a little bit of adjustment, it's a little easier for you guys when you are um, just drawing and you can line your straight edge up on your graph as however you want. So there we go. We've got our line, arrows at the end, and we're ready to go. All right, so the next page has four you try problems. I would like you to try these on your own and then come back and check your work against mine. For letter E, we start off by finding our slope and our y-intercept. So my slope is four. My y-intercept is negative eight. So we start off at the point negative eight. And my slope is 4, so I'm going up 4 and to the right 1, up 4, right 1, up 4, right 1, uh, up 1, 2, 3, 4, right 1. And that does look like the best I can do with the size of my grid. So I draw my straight line, and I put my arrows at the end of it. Letter f, y equals 2x minus 1. We find our slope and our y-intercept. Slope is 2, and our y-intercept is negative 1. So we go ahead and we plot the point at negative 1. And with a slope of 2, we are going up 2 and to the right 1 with each step that we take. Up 2, right 1, up 2, right 1, up 2, right 1. We have a whole bunch of points here, so I don't really need to go backwards down my pattern. I'm just going to draw my straight edge and make a slight adjustment up at the top there, and I'm good to go. Letter G, we have a slope of negative 3 fifths, so that means we are going to be going down as we move left to right, and we're starting at a point 2. So my first point is at y equals 2. And then we're going down 3 and to the right 5. And we're going down 3 and to the right 5. Well, that's my bare minimum of points. Um, I can certainly add some more in there. So I'm going to go up 3 and to the left 5. And then up 3 and to the left 5. So if we connect our points, we have our line. Letter H. Again, we're going to highlight my slope is negative one-third, so I'm going to be going down and to the right from my starting point of 7, which is right there. Get the right color. There we go. And our point, we're going down 1 to the right 3 each step. So down 1, right 3, down 1, right 3, down 1, right 3. And I have enough points there that I can use that to extrapolate my line. Arrows on the end, and we're good to go. Now, example five is graphing linear equations. And what you'll notice about these equations is we're not already in slope-intercept form, so we need to solve them for slope-intercept form. So 2y minus 6 is equal to 3x. My first step is going to be to add 6 to both sides. And when I do that, I get 2y is equal to 3x plus 6. My next step is going to be to divide 
everything, so all three terms by 2. I'm going to get y is equal to 3 halves x plus 3. And so now, if I look at that equation, my slope is right here with 3 halves, and my y-intercept is right here with plus 3. And so if I plot that point, a point at plus 3, and my slope is 3 halves, so I'm going up 1, 2, 3, and to the right 2, up 1, 2, 3, to the right 2. I have my bare minimum of points of 3, but I'm going to give myself a little bit more room for accuracy, so I'm going to do the pattern backwards. So instead of up 3 to the right 2, I'm going to go down 3 and to the left 2, down 3, left 2, down 3, left 2, and we'll go down 3 and then left 2. And so now we can graph this line. And it is not complete until you have your arrows at the end. With letter B, I see that I'm going to add 2 to both sides. I'm going to get y is equal to negative 3x, and it's plus 2. So my y-intercept is a positive 2. My slope is a negative 3. If it helps you to remember that it's negative 3 over 1, that's something you can do. So we're going to start off at positive 2. And my slope is negative 3, so we're going down 3 and to the right 1 with each step. Down 3, right 1. Down 3, right 1. Down 3, right 1. And we're going to go ahead and connect our dots. And when we do, we have our line. All right. If we go to the next page, you're going to have two you try problems that I would like you to do on your own and then come back and check them against my work. All right, letter C. My first step, I need to distribute the 4 times the 5 and the 4 times the negative 3x. So I get negative 2y is equal to 4 times 5 is 20 and 4 times minus 3x is minus 12x. Now my second step is going to be divide by negative 2. And I need to do this to all three of my segments. I get that y is going to be equal to 20 divided by negative 2 is negative 10. Negative 12 divided by negative 2 is plus 6x. So now I identify my slope is going to be a positive 6. My y-intercept is at negative 10. So I can start off with my first point at y is negative 10. And my slope is positive 6. So I'm going to go up 6 and to the right 1. I'm going to go up 6 and to the right 1. And then I'm going to go up 6 and to the right 1. And that's all that I'm able to fit on this grid. So I draw my line in, and I put arrows at the end of it. Now, the second example, our first step is going to be subtracting 12x from both sides. And I'm going to get negative 3y equals negative 12x plus 18. And my next step is going to be to divide by negative 3. And I get that y is equal to negative 12 divided by negative 3 is positive 4x. Negative or 18 divided by negative 3 is minus 6. And so if I again highlight my slope is 4, my y-intercept is negative 6. So we start with a point at negative 6. And my slope is 4, so I'm going up 4 and to the right 1 each time. Up 4, right 1. 
up four, right one, up four, right one. And I use a straight edge and I draw in my line and we are finished with this problem as soon as we put on the arrows. So now example six is asking us to graph constant functions. So these are gonna be functions that are going to be equal to their y-intercept. So if I look at my equation, my slope is non-existent, but I do have a y-intercept. The slope is non-existent, it is zero because this is a horizontal line. So we're gonna have a horizontal line at y is equal to two. So we just have a horizontal line at y equals positive two. Since these aren't very challenging, we're gonna jump straight into the U-try. Go ahead and graph this one on your own and then check your work against mine. Again, negative five is my y-intercept and the slope is zero, meaning that it is canceled out. So I'm going to have a line that's horizontal at negative five. And again, we're including arrows at the end of our line, like always. So, as we look at example seven, use graphs of linear functions, we are finding the number of online shoppers in the United States can be modeled by the equation negative 5.8x plus y is equal to 172.3, where y represents the number of millions of online shoppers x years after 2010. Estimate the number of people shopping online in 2020. So my first step is, and I'm going to kind of show it down at the bottom here, we're going to add 5.88x to both sides. And that's going to give us y equals 5.88x plus 172.3. Now we need to graph this, so we need to figure out what are my slope and what are my y-intercept. 5.88 is my slope. 172.3 is my y-intercept. So now, if we look at the grid that I'm given, we're going to make some approximations. Now, the first thing I notice as I look at this grid, um, we are going up by 25 each grid line. Now, the graph only shows or only labels every other line, but I know that we're going up by 25 because there's two lines before you get to 50, two lines then before you get to 100, so I know it has to be half of that interval. So it'll be 25. So we're going to approximately mark our graph, and it's going to be approximately 172, which is going to be just under uh, the line for 175. Now my slope is 5.8, so it's it's about you know if we if we do some approximations, it's about six. And as I look at this, so if this was originally uh, 172, if we add six to that. Uh, that's going to be 178, so it's going to be a little bit above that line now. And then if we add uh, 6 more again, that gives us uh, 184. So, you know, it's about there, right? And then we add 6 more to that. Well, that's 190, so we're getting closer. And then we add uh, 6 more to that, and now we're at 196. And then we tip over uh, to 202. All right, and we can now, we've got a whole lot of points here, and we can just kind of extrapolate a line here of what we think this is going to be. And approximately, you know, the question is asking us, estimate the number of people shopping online in 2020. Well, if I look at my graph here, and if I look at where we are in 2020, that would be 10 years after this data was taken and we look straight across, uh, we're gonna have approximately 220, so maybe like 235 million people, maybe. Now we know 2020, uh, the number of people online shopping in the United States skyrocketed because of COVID-19. So that changed the world and that was a way, you know, it changed our buying trends as well. All right, let's take a look at the next page. We have a plumber that is charging a $65 fee for a repair plus $35 per hour. And we want to write an equation to model the total cost Y of the repair that takes X hours 
and then we want to graph it. So our important pieces of information, my rate, I'm looking for a rate of change. Again, remember from yesterday, that keyword of per is what I'm looking for. So $35 per hour seems like my rate. Now, a y-intercept is a starting amount, uh, and so it seems as though this plumber is charging a $65 fee just for doing the repairs. So that seems like it's going to be my starting amount. So we have y is equal to my slope, 35 times x, plus my starting point, which is 65. Now, if I look over at my graph, there's two things that I need to label. First of all, I need to label that my y-axis is dollars and my x-axis is hours. And now I can go ahead and graph. I'm starting at 65, and I look at my graph, and I see that the scale, I'm marking 40, 80, 120, 160, 200, 240. But what's really happening there is each one of those lines in between is worth 10. So the graph is going up by 10. We're only labeling every fourth line. So if I'm going to 65, that means I need to go up six lines. So 40, 50, 60. 65 will be halfway between our sixth and seventh line. And so now if I'm going up $35, 65 plus 35 is going to get me to 100. And then if I go up 35 again, well, that's three and a half lines. One, two, three and a half. And then if I go up three and a half again, so we go half to the first line, and then one, two, three, we get to another nice whole number. And then if I go up uh, 10, 20, 35, we get to there. And then if I go up again, half, 10, 20, 35, we get to there. So I'm just measuring it out, and we're going to draw our line in. Now, if you'll notice, I only drew an arrow at one end of this graph. Why would I only draw an arrow at one end of this graph? Well, it's simply that we're not going to have negative hours that we're going to charge a plumber for. Like, he's not paying you for the time it takes him to get there and start the job. So you don't need that graph. So the, this function essentially is going to start at x is equal to 0 and go from there. And we've got a funny joke. All right, so letter C is a U-try problem. I'd like you to do that one on your own and then check it against mine. So our first step is going to be to look at the equation and, or look at the word problem and figure out what is my most important pieces of information. So if we focus in on that, a carpenter charges a $45 fee. Well, that sounds like a starting amount. And then plus $30 per hour for labor. And I want to write an equation for, to model it, and I want to graph it. So there are two outputs that I need to do this. And then it also says estimate the total cost of a three-hour job. So there's actually three things that I need to do to find the outcome here. So... We're going to start with the equation, the first step. We have y is equal to my rate, $30, times the x variable, plus my y-intercept, which is the starting amount of 45. So we're going to graph 45. And so again, if I look at my graph, we're going up by 10 every time. So 45 is halfway between four, 40 and 50, between the fourth and the fifth line. Now, if I'm going up $30 per interval, I'm going to go up three spaces on the board. So one, two, three over one. Up one, two, three over one. Up one, two, three over one. Up one, two, three over one up one two three over one so we have graphed our point we have written our equation and now it says estimate the cost of a three-hour job well i'm going to go up to the graph at three hours and then i'm going to go over to my x-axis uh, and i'm right in between that's 120 130 so it'd be about 135 dollars 
and that's going to be my estimate for a three-hour job. Now, the final question in this set of notes. We have attendance for Division I football game, football bowl games can be shown by the equation 2,069x plus y is going to be equal to 52,648, where y is the average attendance and x is the number of years since 2010. Which of the following graphs represents this equation? So the first thing we need to do, let's put that equation into slope-intercept form. Right, and in order to do that, I'm going to subtract the 2069. So we'll do minus 2069 from both sides, and that's x. And so I get that this equation is going to be y is equal to negative 2069x plus 52648. Now if I'm looking at these graphs, I want to try to figure out what can I eliminate right away. Now my y-intercept, my y-intercept is going to be at 52,648. Are there any that I can eliminate based on y-intercept? Well, the third graph, or the fourth graph, is definitely eliminated because it's starting me at, you know, somewhere between uh, 0 and 6,000. So it's starting me somewhere around 4,000, 3,000. Um, so that's definitely not right, right? We need to be starting at 52,000. Okay, so uh, let's see. Our first and our second and our third all seem to be in that same ballpark. So now let's look at what my slope is. My slope in this case is negative 2,069. Well, first of all, the second one can be eliminated because it has a positive slope. That doesn't work. Uh, and now this is our slope per year. So now we need to compare the slopes of our first graph and our third graph. In our first graph, looks like we are going down much more substantially. In our third graph, um, it looks like we've barely gone down, you know, 3,000 people over the course of 10 years. But this equation is talking about the x is the number of years since 2010. So you would you would think in order to uh, for 10 years to pass, we would have to be doing significantly more than that. So the third one is eliminated as well. And the first one is going to be our winner because it does appear as though we are going down approximately 2,000 people per year. So if we were to think of that average over 10 years, that'd be... 20,000 people, and that does in fact look like where we got to with that decrease. With our letter, uh, the third choice, we're barely going down 2,000 over 10 years. All right, so those are our notes for today. Uh, if you have any questions, please bring them to class tomorrow. Otherwise, have a great day.